guys. How are you doing, Dominic? I'm well. How are you, Stephanie? I absolutely love. I'm sure you've heard this a lot today, but I absolutely love the movie. Um, I mean, this is such a great role for you. I mean, you must have been so thrilled when you got offered this part to know that all that kind of hard work and those years of grafting have been noticed because this is such a fantastic part to get. Thank you. Yeah, it was interesting because um, I had been reading A Taste of Power by Elaine Brown, who was a, a Panther in the Oakland chapter. So I was really getting a entrance into the woman's perspective. And so when I got the email saying that Shaka had the role for me and that he wanted me to to play it, I really was able to like marvel at the universe and God because things were aligning beyond what I could see, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's just this amazing opportunity. And how, how essential are the kind of smaller, more human elements to the kind of relationship between Deborah and Fred? Because so often as audiences, we only really know what we read, you know, news stories, Wikipedia entries, you know, but this, it sometimes it takes a movie like this to really show the, the, the kind of humanity we can't discover elsewhere, you know, the passions, their artistry. I mean, how important are those side of things? Oh, they were so important. Daniel and I talked about that, like, you know, uh, making sure that in the quiet moments, we get to see that they're, they are kids, you know, 19 and 21 years old. They had a big calling on their lives and they, they stepped up to the calling, but it doesn't make them any less, any less like new and, and youthful, you know, especially in those moments of, of love. And I think it's important in films like this to show the humanity of, of our heroes because it allows us to see ourselves in them and believe that we can be heroes too. And that's how we, that's how we make change and that's how we help one another. Do you think this showed a sort of slightly different, more positive portrayal as well of the of the Panthers that we've that we've not seen too many times in film? Yeah, I mean, I didn't, yeah, it's a positive portrayal, but I also think of it as like an honest portrayal. You know, there was so much propaganda. So when you think positive, you think, oh, we're just trying to show the goodness in them, but no, we're actually just trying to show the truth. You know, and uh, and um, yeah, and, and that's why I'm happy that we had the family on board to kind of be that that cultural uh, consultant to make sure that we were staying in line as well. How helpful were Fred Jr. and Deborah to, to, to helping you get into the character? Yeah, uh, uh, Deborah is, Johnson is now known as uh, Mama Kua, she changed her name, but uh, it, it, was, um, it was extremely important because when we went to the house, we got to meet them and talked around the table for about seven, seven mm -hmm. or so hours. And she talked about the discipline of the Panthers and how there are certain things she just wouldn't say to Chairman Fred. And I couldn't understand because she's such a, a fiery woman, a firecracker, how could that be? And then I learned that when you, when you can trust somebody wholeheartedly, the way that the people trust Fred and the way that she trusts Fred, you, you don't have to be so defensive. And in, and in understanding that, I was able to be open, not just as an artist, as a character, but as a, as a person with my castmates and with my crew. Have you spoken to her uh, since the final her thoughts on the movie? Because I know obviously, you know, there'll be plenty of reviews out there, but none more so that kind of mean more to you than hers. Oh, yes. Well, actually, I'm fortunate because um, around one of the first couple of times I, I put the, the clothes on and everything to play her, she was on set. And I was like, I'm not going to go to Video Village. And they say, well, Mama Cool wants to see you. Went downstairs and Chairman Fred Jr. was crying. Oh, he said it was his allergies. And then she said, uh, you did that scene. That was a Deborah Johnson up there. So it wasn't, it was, we were still in the midst of shooting really early on. And she said that to me. And there's not a lot of footage of her at that age. And so I really had to go off of my intuition, journaling, writing poems as, as her. Every moment that they got together, I wrote a poem for, for those moments. And so to know that me going in, in that route, in that direction, intuitively was, was aligned, felt, felt good. So I'm, I'm extremely happy. And she said that Daniel and I helped her remember that love. So that was also a blessing. Yeah. Allergies, yeah. <laughs> I don't believe yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So if you kept all of those poems, then that must be quite a nice memento from this experience. Oh, yeah, I have the whole journal. It was a journal that I wrote and I wouldn't let it go. I wouldn't leave it on set. They were like, can we store it in case we have to do reshoots? Absolutely not. Um, but it's even better that the poem that you hear in the movie, I got to, I actually got to write that. So not only did I get to be an artist and help portray the story, um, but I got to put my own instincts, my own bit of truth in it. And so there's no better honor than that, really. And one thing that I really, my final question is, but one thing I took away from this, one thing I couldn't shake the day after, it was just thinking about what Fred Hampton could have been capable of, considering how young he was. Is that something that, were they discussions that were had on set? Was that something that played on your mind? Just Because no, I, I never realised, I knew about Fred Hampton, I didn't realise how young he was when he was murdered. No, I didn't play in my mind so so much. I, re, I think we really stayed grounded in the times. I, I didn't look 
I didn't look at news outside of what we were doing because you had you really have to protect yourself in that way. And sometimes we, as black and brown people, we feel like we have to inundate ourselves with the truths and with the horrors of this country and of the world. And sometimes it's just too much. And so for us to open ourselves up as vessels for these stories and for a traumatic part of history like this, I, I think it would, been, would have been irresponsible for me to kind of go outside of it looking for it, for something. So I just stay, I stay put and I trusted my cast and my crew. Cool. But that was affected in the performance. Thank you so much. So uh, much. Today. much appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.